Thank you for the introduction, Jörg. It's really a pleasure uh, being here. I'm actually blown away about the audience here, so that's uh, that's great. So let, let me let me give you uh, uh, you know a little bit of history about speech recognition, where we are today, and where are we actually heading to. And uh, I think since already 40 or 50 years, we, we do have some, some visions or dreams, you know, to, to talk to machines. Uh, we saw this in, 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 some in some science fiction movies in, in the past, uh, like uh, the Space Odyssey or, you know, like the Star Trek uh, 4 movie where the guys from the Enterprise came to the Earth in front of a Mac PC and they wanted to speak to the uh, to, to the computer, it was for them a very natural thing. Unfortunately, the computer did not react on on, on speech. So, in, in these days, we we are we are a little bit ahead. And let, let me show you a bit of history uh, on speech recognition on phones um, and on uh, cars, and recently also on TVs. So, 96. At that time, I was working for Philips Speech Processing. Uh, Philips had introduced at the CBIT uh, the first mobile phone, GSM mobile phone in the world with voice dial. So I remember very well at the CBIT booth at, in, in, in Hannover how the people were playing with the device, you know, putting names uh, in, into the device and then speaking the names. Uh, Philips at that point in time did make a TV spot where a guy did say to his phone, call idiot and then the phone of his boss was ringing. So, uh, so that would mean, and you see that also later on on the theory, you know, you have to cover some features uh, with speech recognition. You have to make sure that you access features, but you also have to create some fun because this helps, you know, that the technology is getting accepted. In 2005, around 2005, um, then we, we, we started to sell to some mobile phone manufacturers like RIM, uh, Motorola, the Motorola Razr at that point in time, Samsung, the voice dial capability, the speaker independent. So you, it was not necessary to train any longer the system to your voice. You just could say, call Peter Miller and the uh, phone uh, did, did dial the number. 2011, you know that. Um, Apple brought out the, uh, the, the 4S with the Siri application. What is the difference? It is a smart combination of speech recognition and NLU, natural language understanding, and that's the future. Uh, I will uh, show some more examples uh, later on. Uh, some other applications you find in, in, in the market which are, you know, supporting the multimodal input idea for, for mobile devices like the Swipe Keyboard, which is a, a, a nuanced product, or the application Dragon, Dragon Go. Cars. What is the history in, in cars? And, uh, I, I, in, the, in the lunch break, I spoke with a guy from Mercedes. Please excuse, this is just Ford examples. Uh, I have the same examples also from Mercedes, but not here on the slide. So, uh, 95, uh, approximately at this point in time, you could buy in the store a car accessory which could do voice dial. So, you could say and speak in the car a phone number or a name, and uh, the, the, the accessory did dial the number. In 2005, finally, uh, we, we managed to enter in the mass market, so this is an advertisement of Ford here in Germany um, announcing speech recognition for the Ford Fiesta. So then we left the BMW, Audi and Mercedes space, so the high-end space, and we managed to go also into the volume cars. In 2012, we are so far that we can uh, understand in the car, you know, several thousand commands, uh, the car is reading to you um, Facebook status uh, tags or uh, emails, and uh, soon we will see a high-end car where you even can do dictation while uh, driving. TVs. TVs we see recently, um, you know, first voice-activated TVs are hitting the market, you, you know this. What is the reason for this? Uh, the TVs are today connected. They are connected to the internet. They are offering a lot of features, so you can you can you know you you can watch YouTube videos on on the TV. 
you can uh, do some Facebook applications or whatever. And this is all you have to do is, I mean, you need to do this with your simple remote control, which is in your, in your living room, which is a little bit difficult. So here, definitely, a demand is for voice control so that you are really able to access all those content sources which uh, you know a, con a connected TV is delivering to your living room. So the capabilities we have today is you can do voice command and control. You can say things like switch to BBC, switch to CNN, but you also can say search for news, and then the software is searching in the electoral program guide for news, and it's proposing you different channels where you can have news at that point in time, or you even can s search for movies or for actors, right? So, and we started here, a Philips example, because this is something I, I, I know. In 95, Philips did introduce, indeed, a remote control with voice recognition. 2001, uh, TV uh, with some voice uh, command and uh, control capabilities. So, so where's the challenge today for, for, for speech recognition? And I ask you, when you ask yourself or you ask you know, people you know, where do you see is the problem? Then, you know, many people are saying, hmm, is the technology still working? Or secondly, I have to know the command words. Right? So I give you an example. In, I'm driving an Audi. Uh, I have to say in my Audi, uh, call Peter Müller. In a BMW, I have to say, dial Peter Müller. When I say call Peter Müller in a BMW, it will not work. So certain command words you have to know. We want to come into the direction that you can do natural language. So, for example, in the, in the TV uh, space, you know, that you can say, like the example here, show, show me the na latest Nike running shoes. And then the TV goes to the internet, goes to the Nike website, and searches through the latest models. Yeah? Or like the, the very popular example in, in the Siri case, do I need today an umbrella in Berlin, which is a very implicit command. It's not really a direct command, it's implicit. The software has to understand it and has to take actions. Yeah? And why, why do you, does the world need this? Why do you need this in the car? Why do you need this in, on the phone? Why do you need this uh, on, on the TV? You have access to all kinds of different content sources. And when you give a, a you know, voice command, it doesn't help you when you get 1,000 Google results. Yeah? You want to have immediately the thing you are looking for. Yeah? And th that's the challenge. And, and here, uh, you know, the challenge is to, make, you know, to combine all those different technologies, which is not just only speech recognition. That means the transformation from speech into text. It is also the natural language understanding technology, so analyze the text behind and do the respective action. And, and here, um, you know, the worldwide R&D, uh, not only at, at Nuance, also at other companies, uh, uh, of course, yeah, looking at, you know, different input and output technologies. Input technology can be speech, can be voice, can be gesture, can be mind, even. We should add that here on the slide, mind uh, uh, control. But behind, you need some other uh, you know, uh, uh, technologies which are you know, extracting the meaning and the reasoning of that, what you are saying. And then we come you know, to, to, the, to the, you know, the result that you can do a natural conversation with the machine, right? independent from any vocabulary, right? And that is where we are focusing uh, right, right now on. Uh, very much focused on the three beloved devices, the car, the phone, and the TV. So let me just make a, a vision, the handset of 2015. Maybe it's uh, 2016 or 2017. So your voice will unlock this device. Yeah, today, you see devices coming to the market. You can unlock them with your face, so with face recognition. Voice verification is the other option. Maybe it's more reliable, right? And you can communicate with the device in a very natural way. You can do very natural search on the device because, you know, use case number one on the device is mobile search. 
use case number uh, uh, sorry, in use case number two is mobile search, use case number one is still calling. And we also will, uh, you know, implement technologies which will definitely enable uh, voice commerce and secure voice commerce. What are we doing in the car? Also the car, you will unlock with your voice. So the car will recognize your voice, not the gangster's uh, voice. You will uh, have the capability to do with natural language your destination entry. You will have the capability to say in a natural way where is the next cheapest fuel station, for example. Yeah? The car is also connected to the internet and it finds for you the cheapest fuel station in your area. And similar for the TV, all running on the same platform, speech recognition combined with, with NLU, you also will unlock your, you will be able to unlock your TV with your voice, not with the voice of your kids, for example. You can program that. Yeah, and you can do some smart search also. You can do search in the program guide, but you also can do search in the movie database of your uh, IPTV service provider, for example. All right. That's it. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>